Now, the Three Martini Lunch with Greg Corumbus and Jim Garrity. And welcome, everyone, to the Monday edition of the Three Martini Lunch, along with Jim Garrity of National Review. I'm Greg Corumbus of Radio America. It's already one of those weeks. Crazy, crazy, and crazy martinis, Jim. We can't help it. It's just the way the news is right now. All of it, though, sponsored by Simply Safe Home Security. They're not crazy. They've got a really good deal that we'll tell you about a little bit later. But if you want to keep you and your family and your home safe for no commitments and very little money every month, simplysafe.com uh, is the way to go. A little bit more on them a little bit later in the podcast. Jim, let's start. With the first crazy martini, and of course, we have to talk a little bit about Russia. One of the things that happened over the weekend is uh, Jay Sekulow, who is well known as a conservative attorney, but uh, he is now representing President Trump. And he did, I don't know if it was the full Ginsburg, but it was pretty darn close. He was uh, on a lot of the Sunday morning chat shows yesterday defending not only the president, but Donald Trump Jr. I'm not sure that strategy is the smartest one in the long term, but that's the one they're using right now. And uh, the the short version of the story is, he says, there's really nothing to the Donald Trump Jr. story. There's no crime committed there. And in fact, you know, if there's anything that anybody would have been worried about, the Secret Service vetted this meeting. So clearly it's, it's not a problem. They knew exactly who was in that meeting. Well, the Secret Service has decided that that needs to be countered because guess what? Donald Trump Jr. was not under Secret Service protection at the time. The presumptive presidential nominee for the Republican Party, Donald Trump, was. But since he wasn't at the meeting, guess what? He actually wasn't <laughs> vetted, uh, and neither was anybody else at that meeting. So the Secret Service clearly pushing back on that and more egg on the face of, uh, of Team Trump on this when what seems like another unforced error, Jim. Yeah, I, as soon as he said that, I remember sitting there thinking, wait a minute, that was kind of early in the year. It wasn't, um, uh, he, you know, it was, it was right around the time of the Republican convention. Usually the, the Secret Service only adds protection after you become the nominee. They obviously could adjust that if there was some sort of uh, known threat to the, the figure or something like that. But it doesn't always extend to the whole family. And the idea, even if they are, you know, doing the, the sort of, you know, traditional scrutiny of figures, uh, you know, most like say, lots of people get to go up on stage and meet the, the presidential nominee at these rallies and stuff like that. All that requires, as I understand, is for them to go through a uh, uh, a metal detector or something like that. They're not doing the full scrub, so to speak, of the person's background. Uh, and so if this person had some sort of nefarious connection to the Russian government, it's unlikely that the most cursory background check performed by the Secret Service would do that. It could also, at this point, you probably would have seen something like uh, the Secret Service is telling a presidential candidate who he can and cannot meet with. You know, I, I just think that's never been the way things have worked there. The, the whole purpose is to say, is this person on some sort of watch list for terrorism or watch list for threatening the president in the past or something like that? Um, it really was a fairly implausible argument. If you guys really, if, if this really is a harmless meeting, then the best thing possible to do is to put out as much information as possible, uh, a full accounting of who all the eight people there were, names, what was discussed. We've got some accounts from uh, uh, the one Russian lawyer who everyone keeps mistaking for uh, Valerie Bertinelli. Uh, <laughs> we've got the version of events from Donald Trump Jr. I don't know if we've seen heard from from Kushner on the record. Um, I don't think Paul Manafort has issued a statement. Just get every, as much information as possible. And if this really was fairly harmless and mostly focused on adoptions, fine. We still have that email put out by Donald Trump Jr. that says, hey, Russia wants to help us. Uh, it's the Russian government. They're trying to help our campaign. we got to have this meeting, which uh, does not look particularly good for them. You'd like to think they would sit around and, and kind of like – Think about these arguments before they put them out on national television and just think through, hey, would the Secret Service have checked that person? Because obviously they didn't. <laughs> right. Donald Trump Jr. was not under Secret Service protection in June 2016. Thus, we would not have screened anyone he was meeting with at that time. All right. Let's move on to the second crazy martini. And this one's double barreled. So in, in some ways, we really have four crazy martinis today. So. Buckle up, everybody. It's going to be one of those weeks. And let's first of all start with the Boston Globe. Uh, they are off 
in defense of Jane Sanders, and Jim can <laughs> explain in a little more detail why uh, the sexist card here uh, being played by Jane Sanders is pretty ridiculous. He talks about this in the Morning Jolt today. But here's the quote uh, in the Boston Globe from Jane Sanders. Uh, she's upset uh, at this uh, lawyer who's been looking into her uh, time as president of Burlington College, which is now closed as a result of her financial malfeasance. Uh, but she's, of course, the victim here. Quote, I find it incredibly sexist that basically he's going after my husband by destroying my reputation, and that's not okay. Um, she said in her first interview about the man responsible for an FBI probe that centers on her leadership at Burlington College. The lawyer is a guy named Brady Tunsing. Uh, you might know his mother is very well known as a lawyer here in town in Washington, Victoria Tunsing, and so forth. So he's apparently on the short list to be the U.S. attorney up there in Vermont. Uh, and Jim, it's just awful, awful, must be sexist that uh, he's looking into uh, the allegations surrounding the financial improprieties at Burlington College while Jane Sanders was president. Meanwhile, not to be outdone, Kellyanne Conway was at the Family Leadership Summit out in Iowa, hosted by Bob Vanderplatz. And this is an interesting uh, playing of the gender card as well, because this comes uh, in two different parts. First, just a couple minutes before the second bite, Vanderplatz offers this with this Conway response. I've known you long enough. I've always respected your talent, your ability, uh, how articulate you are. And you've never, ever used a gender card. And you won't today either. Thank you for saying we don't play the gender card. If you want to disagree on policy, if you disagree on tax reform or health care reform or immigration or you're for abortion and I'm not, uh, then say that. Disagree that way. That's what America is. But so, me so much of the criticism of me is so gender-based. I saw some of it this morning. I would use it as examples, but this is a family audience. Um, <laughs> but so much of it is gender-based, obviously. Now, Jim Conway obviously has a point. We see it from uh, Sarah Palin to Condi Rice to whatever conservative woman or minority figure uh, you, you want to mention. Uh, once they become prominent, Ben Carson, Clarence Thomas, whoever, they get just the vitriol that uh, you would never see necessarily going in the opposite direction. But to go from saying, we never play the gender card, and thanks for noticing, to, well, this is clearly the gender card. Um, what do you make of this on both sides of the political spectrum? Sure. Let, let's begin with Kellyanne Conway. Um, Kellyanne Conway gets a lot of grief and aggravation, a lot of criticism that takes a particular tone that you might not see uh, coming to a male conservative figure. I'm thinking of uh, the portrayal on Saturday Night Live, uh, where they kind of portrayed her as a crazed stalker doing a fatal attraction style of routine on Jake Tapper. Um, I, I just, I've never gotten a vibe that Kellyanne Conway was a stalker who was trying to get attention. Uh, you want to make fun of her for saying things, spin that isn't particularly plausible. You want to give her grief for uh, making arguments that are not accurate. You want to give her grief about the little flashcard she was doing earlier and the idea that it was, you know, <laughs> Turning it to cheesy, pro fine, fine. But there, you know, I, there, there are certain things that just it seemed like random, negative, feminine traits were being stuck on Kellyanne Conway uh, that didn't seem fair or accurate, or didn't even seem like good satire to me. The flip side, of course, is that they, entire life made fun of Sean Spicer plenty. Uh, they make fun of of uh, Trump himself. They make fun of Bannon by having the Grim Reaper. Like it's not like this is unique. It's not like they're they're uniquely picking on her. So I, I do, you know. There are times where you feel like it does take a slightly different tone, but right after you say, we're not going to play the gender card, and then you say, sometimes it is gender-based, well, I'm not sure that's the case. I want to focus more on Jane Sanders, because I want to walk you through, Greg, the good scenario for, for Jane Sanders. Let's, let's look at the, the least uh, uh, damaging, so the, the, the basic facts of so Burlington College, used to, she used to be president of this Burlington College, uh, this is the wife of Bernie Sanders. Uh, back in about 2010, it bought, spent $10 million to buy the former headquarters of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Burlington as part of an expansion plan. And in order to do it, they, they didn't have the money to buy this land. So they had to make a, a $6 million in loans from banks. And here's the interesting thing, a $3.5 million loan from the diocese. Um, I didn't know that churches would give you loans that large if you want to buy, like, it's, you know, like when I bought my house, I didn't say to the guy who was, who was selling to me, hey, can you loan me the money to buy it? Um, but apparently that's what they did, and they wanted to, to go along with this. Uh, and order the collateral to get all these loans was held. We have a lot of pledges from our donors uh, that will help us pay back all this debt we're taking on. Surprise, surprise, they did not. Now, uh, Sanders left uh, in 2011, not too long after this purchase. 
she could argue, well, as far as I knew, the, all those donors were going to pay and everything was going to turn out fine. But it seems pretty clear that shortly after this, she left, uh, it became very clear that no, those donors were not going to pay in that money. And all of a sudden, uh, as she's leaving 2011, she gets a large buyout package and the college has millions of dollars in debt that they fail to raise money to cover. They end up effectively having to declare bankruptcy and the school ends up closing down. And it, it's Burlington College is no longer open. It went kaput last year. That's that's a pretty glaring failure. You don't hear about a lot of colleges just closing their doors and ceasing to exist any further. And while this land purchase wasn't the only reason, obviously admissions are going down, obviously tuition payments are down. But overall, this this was the impetus. This was the you know little stone that started the, the avalanche that ended up swamping the college. Now, even if there's no fraud involved in the loan applications, this still looks pretty bad for Jane Sanders. And uh, Bernie Sanders attempting to defend him. I won't even do the impression here. He said, no, my wife is about the honest person I know. When she came to that college, it was failing financially and academically. When she left it, it was in better shape than it had ever been. Well, within a few years, it went out of business, Senator. <laughs> How, how well was it doing? So I, I don't, their whole explanation, by the way, let's just pause for the perfect irony that a socialist or a person <laughs> married to a socialist ran out of other people's money. <laughs> Bit of a heavy handed metaphor there. So uh, no, Jane Sanders, I don't think it's sexism that people are asking hard questions about this. Best case scenario, you ran that college into the ground by making an unwise, massive land purchase that they simply couldn't afford to finance. Worst case scenario, you kind of knew that money was going to be there and you were basically committing bank fraud. So um, this is currently under investigation. The Sanders are saying this is a partisan witch hunt. Surprise, surprise. This will, so to speak, all come out in the wash. But uh, I don't think the sexism defense is worth anything in this uh, in this uh, particular issue. Jim, it's not that socialism doesn't work. They just didn't do it right in this case. And so That's if you have right. a That's pure right. form of socialism, I'm sure it would be the Shangri-La <laughs> that we've always dreamed of. Denmark. <laughs> So, all right. Well, if you want your college finances to be safe, don't hire Jane Sanders. If you want your <laughs> home to be safe, get Simply Safe Home Security. A lot of us get excited for summertime because it means going on vacation. Yes, you can go to the beach. Uh, Jim just had a nice vacation. I've got one coming up. Or spending long days at the beach, maybe taking the kids to an amusement park. You know what gets a burglar excited for summer? Knowing that you'll do all those things and you'll leave your house empty. Summer is prime time for burglary. So now is the time to protect your home. For a limited time, you can take a whopping $100 off Simply Safe's special summer package. This is the biggest ever summer sale from Simply Safe. It has everything you need to protect your home, an arsenal of security sensors to secure each door and window. Your Simply Safe system will come with a panic button, a blaring extra siren, and a wireless connection to authorities and police dispatch. Your family, your home, and everything in it stays safe around the clock. With Simply Safe, there are no long term contracts, no installation costs, no hidden fees. You get 24 7 professional monitoring, just $14.99 a month. I need to pause and congratulate Jim Garrity for successfully saying this is the biggest ever summer sale for Simply Safe on the first take. There was no edit there. I just want to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> this summer, see what Simply Safe can do for your home. Get $100 off your summer security package at simplysafe.com slash ricochet. Hurry, this sale ends July 31st. That's simplysafe.com slash ricochet to get your $100 off. S I M P L I S A F E dot com slash ricochet. That's simplysafe.com slash ricochet for $100 off your purchase. All right, Jim, it's been a pretty rough three martini lunch today for folks on the right, with the exception of the Sanders aspect of the second martini. And it's not getting any better in the third one. Ann Coulter is the uh, centerpiece of our third one today. This is courtesy of CNN Money. Delta Airlines has hit back on what it called a public attack on its employees and customers by Ann Coulter after the conservative pundit posted a series of angry tweets over an in-flight seat mix-up she experienced over the weekend. Coulter tweeted at Delta on Saturday, apparently after her flight from New York's LaGuardia Airport to West Palm Beach, Florida, had landed, calling it, quote, the worst airline in America. She subsequently detailed how she was asked to move from a seat with extra legroom that she had carefully chosen in advance and booked 
and then posting a picture of the woman her seat was given to and targeting the airline's employees. So here are some of her tweets. So glad I took time to investigate the aircraft and pre-book a specific seat on Delta so some woman could waltz in at the last minute and take my seat. Then, Delta motto, how could we make your flight more uncomfortable? Delta said Coulter had originally booked a window seat in an exit row, but changed it to one in the aisle less than 24 hours before. The airline said it inadvertently moved Coulter during boarding to another window seat in the same row when working to accommodate several passengers with seating requests. Coulter kept it up with more tweets, including, If Delta employees were not so honorable and trustworthy, I would have said this was an outright lie. But facts are not insults. Finally, uh, Delta getting back at her and saying we are disappointed that the customer has chosen to publicly attack our employees and other customers by posting derogatory and slanderous comments and photos in social media. So she's going to get her 30 bucks back uh, for not getting the seat with the extra leg room. Jim, when you're a public figure, you got to know something like this is going to go public, especially when you tweet about it. And it's a flight from New York to West Palm Beach, which isn't that long. Uh, it sounds like it wasn't that miserable of a flight. I don't know for sure, but you just got to conduct yourself better than that. Yeah, hey, look, this is the downside of Twitter uh, is that there's no – they really – you know how they used to have that little paper clip that used to pop up in Microsoft Word? Yes. It looks like you're trying to start a letter. Let me help you with the grammar or something like that. Right. We really need something like that on Twitter, which is kind of pop up and say – it looks like you're going to vent very publicly and, and in an over-the-top manner about a fairly mundane problem that a lot of people don't care about. <laughs> That's not a particularly unusual set of circumstances. It's unfortunate. Would you like me to steer this only to your friends? Right. <laughs> Maybe that's what Facebook is for, right? Because I, you know, I, my sympathies. We all have had bad experiences while flying. Yes, it's really, really annoying if you buy a pre-reserved one and for whatever reason they're they're moving you for your seat or something like that. Um, I'm just going to point out that one of the guys who used to edit the Morning Jolt uh, got married, and he recently was on a flight. He, for whatever reason, they couldn't book two seats together. They asked somebody if they could sit together on their flight for their honeymoon, and the person would not switch their seats. <laughs> Sometimes air passengers are just terrible people. Um, but so Ann Coulter just, just goes on this furious rant, and it just seems to get more and more intense and more and more uh, enraged by all this. And, I, and I'm seeing she has retweeted here. Um, a claim about a couple that was unfortunately, you know, uh, Delta thro throwing California couple with two infants off plane f further fuels in-flight abuse fears. Now, they have some picture. They look very exasperated. But you know what the headline says there, Greg? What? Stasi. <laughs> yes, it's just like the East German special police. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, like, just, just you know, like, Yes, it's really awful. And here's the thing. It feels like at least once a week you, you end up hearing about somebody who has a really terrible – their flight gets canceled or they're stuck on the runway. The whole thing about getting stuck on the runway right when you're about to depart. I don't know if people have noticed, Greg. This is summer. Thunderstorms happen. We get them here on the East Coast. You get them going into Florida. I believe she's had, trying to head into West Palm Beach. You're going to have weather-related delays a lot. This is why you try to fly early in the day. But anyway, so – this is really less about Ann Coulter and more about people who are famous going through fairly, you know, disappointingly normal frustrations of air travel and believing that what's happening to them is a national outrage because it's happening to them. Never mind the fact, never mind all the non-celebrity people who get, you know, issues with seating or they get a screaming baby next to them or they get bumped or their luggage gets lost. I mean, this, this, this stuff happens, people. You just kind of have to, you know— Soldier, like, like you can't compare yourself to the you know the guys storming beaches at Normandy one day, and then flip out because the airlines are making you move your seat. So. Somewhere, somebody at Delta is listening to this who responds to or, or reads consumer replies when they ask you how your flight was, and and they're thinking to themselves, "Wait a minute, Greg's taking our side this time." Yeah, at some point, you know, at some point they're going to. Uh, uh, we're, we're now on some file, and we're either going to get a free upgrade or we're going to say, ah, you know, Garrity wasn't that nice to us. You know. <laughs> oh, Mr. Garrity, you, you're you're good 6'2". We'll put you in the very last row, okay? <laughs> and they tell the person right in front of me, make sure you put your seat back the moment we're done with takeoff. So. Oh, if I'm going to get a voucher, I'm going to need a lot more uh, positive comments on the three martini lunch. They've had some issues. Airline employees are, issues are terribly overworked and underpaid, and why aren't they just, you know, why don't they get more respect? That's it. 
Oh, Jim, we're off to a very crazy start to the week. Hopefully things will settle down uh, a little bit, but uh, if recent history is any guide, we have no hope of that actually happening. So talk to you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Greg. Jim Garrity of National Review. I'm Greg Corumbus of Radio America, and thanks very much for being with us today. Don't forget to visit our friends at Simply Safe Home Security. Right now, you can get $100 off your new Simply Safe Home Security system, simplysafe.com slash ricochet. And join us again on Tuesday for the next Three Martini Lunch. Napa Know How. A Napa guy knows more isn't always better. Unless we're talking about full-size vans. These beasts do more than get you from A to B. They have so much space a man can live in it. With shag carpeting, water bed, and a sweet lava lamp, these mobile abodes have all the comforts of home. With quality parts and plenty of Napa know-how, you can keep the original tiny house running longer, stronger. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. It happens every summer. Stargazers delight in the opportunity to view constellations that can't be seen in winter, while car lovers delight in the opportunity to own one of our stars. At the Mercedes-Benz Summer Event, you can get the Mercedes-Benz of your dreams for less than you thought possible, like the supremely intelligent E-Class sedan or the awe-inspiring GLC. Don't miss this once-in-a-summertime opportunity. Hurry in to our summer event. Visit MBUSA.com to learn more. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing.